Season 7 of My Hero has begun and comes swinging out of the gates. Not to mention Star's quirk, New Order may be one of the most overpowered quirks in the show thus far. Minus one for all and all for one of course. The episode opens up with Deku who seems much more well rested and healthy when we last saw him. My guy needed a good night's rest. I can't imagine he was sleeping well during his vigilante arc, if he even did sleep that is. Deku ends up thinking back on the words Uraraka said back when she was fighting for Deku to stay at the school, as well as thinking on the whole idea of whether or not he'll have to kill Shigaraki. Of course Deku doesn't want to kill Shigaraki, but there have been many characters in the show who have made it clear that there is no way to save Shigaraki. I'm of course referencing the scene between Nana and Deku when she makes the statement of potentially having to kill her own grandson. Not to mention that Gran Torino also mentions the idea of having to kill Shigaraki. However, with it being a shonen anime, I no doubt believe Deku will find a way to save the young Tenko within Shigaraki. After catching up with Deku and Class 1A, we then cut to the opening for Season 7, which I won't show much here, but anyone who has seen the episode will know it's an amazing opening. I don't think it tops Season 3's opening, that opening for me is my favourite and will always be my favourite, which reminds me, comment down your favourite opening from its respected season. I would love to gauge how many people like certain openings. Afterwards, we cut to some US Air Force members who are all sitting around watching the news on what's happening over in Japan, with the news anchor even getting attacked by some jailbreakers. Which just goes to show, despite all the work Vigilante Deku did, there is still a massive crime wave currently in Japan. This then riles up the members of the Air Force, but Star herself comes in to reassure the members and asks for their aid and escort into Japan. And wow, finally seeing Star and Stripe animated is phenomenal. We would catch up with Star heading to Japan, but just beforehand would see a scene between All For One and Spinner. All For One is mostly telling Spinner about his next plan because taking one for all is not the main goal for the criminal overlord and he even says that he has a whole life plan. All for one then goes on to explain that he has friends all over the world so the only thing all for one needs to do is to tell those criminals to run a riot and it will cause other countries to panic and not be able to send reinforcements over to Japan. Of course if all for one pulls this off it's going to mean that Japan are on their own and the heroes will have no reinforcements to help. We also get some more background on Spinner but it's nothing we haven't heard before it's mostly just setting up Spinner's massive story arc during the war, which I won't touch on due to spoilers, but just know that Spinner is going to have some insane character development during the All Out War. We then check in with Hawks, Best Genist and Endeavor, who are all racing to meet Star. Once the heroes meet up, they will be able to form a plan for what's coming. Unfortunately though, due to some unforeseen circumstances, Shigaraki intercepts Star from reaching Japan, and this is where the epic showdown between the two would finally take place. The episode had been building up to this very moment with All For One mentioning Star earlier in the episode and wanting her quirk for himself. We know how the criminal overlord is, if there's a chance of taking an interesting quirk then All For One would be more than happy to take it. Now surprisingly the US Air Force would actually have really good intel on Shigaraki, that they were prepared for his EMP quirk and would deploy a counter force field so none of them would be affected by an EMP attack should Shigaraki use one, which is incredibly smart considering we've seen just how devastating that EMP quirk can be in the right hands. While the jets were getting in battle formation, we actually get some more monologue from Shigaraki, who seems to be having quite a bit of an identity crisis. He knows that he's Shigaraki, but he also feels like All For One just the same, just how he feels like Tenko as well. He basically has multiple personalities all fighting for control living within him, and a loss of identity through that. This is important to note for later on in the episode, but we quickly cut back to the action where Shigaraki uses an assortment of quirks for his first attack. The jets dodge and weave with Shigaraki even mocking Star and saying that he knows all too well about her quirk and it comes down to whoever gets their hand on their opponent first. If Shigaraki places his hand on Star first then he not only steals her quirk but can use Decay to destroy America's number one hero. However if Star places her hand on Shigaraki then she can use New Order to completely stop Shigaraki. Star would instead outsmart Shigaraki here and would make a completely different play instead. Star and ends up manipulating the air around him which is when we finally get our first look at Star's quirk, New Order. I'll explain New Order in due time but cutting back to the action we see Star making a vacuum around Shigaraki so that he can't breathe. The jets then fire lasers hoping to destroy Shigaraki but he just deflects the attack with another quirk. 
Star then uses her quirk again to create a new rule where the lasers can be held, saving her comrades in the process. Shigaraki would see an opening and go into attack, but Star would completely counter and smash Shigaraki back, in which Star would go in for the final attack. As Star is flying through the air, she reminisces about the time All Might saved her and her family, which is why she looks up to All Might so much. This also of course does somewhat make the MHA movies canon, although I'm not sure to what degree. Star then lands on the plane and pins Shigaraki down, letting him know that in her last attack, she actually called his name, and with that, Star uses another rule. If Shigaraki moves at all from this place, his heart will stop. We then get another indication that both Shigaraki and All For One inhabit the same body, and this makes them have a loss in identity. This means by technicality, Star's rule doesn't work on Shigaraki. I mean, not the way it's supposed to anyway. If Shigaraki was absolutely sure that it was him in control, then her new order quirk would have worked in this scenario. But unfortunately for Star, this ends up failing, and Shigaraki then uses another quirk to blast Star away. This is when we finally start seeing the full details of Star's quirk. The basic rundown of the quirk is that Star can apply any rule to both living and non-living matter. This is why she's able to make the jet lasers holdable and manipulate the air around her. She's also able to affect living matter like herself, where she can apply the rule of super strength, or even conditional rules where the specific condition has to be met for the quirk to activate. So if Shigaraki were to have been himself and moved from the spot he was at, his heart would have stopped and he would have been dead. It's no surprise that this quirk is busted. I mean Star is pretty much a god here, being able to manipulate the world around her. There are limitations to this quirk though, that being Star can only apply two rules at a time. If she attempts to apply a third rule then it will cancel out one of the previous rules. I have to give props to Horikoshi as well, he's always able to to come up with incredibly unique powers for the characters while also putting rules in place so that the quirks aren't too broken. We see Star gear up for another attack after being blasted away but this time she uses a crazy ultimate move. She makes the air around her harden into a shape a thousand times her size which makes this gigantic air replica of herself. She's then able to use the air giant to fight back but since it's just air Shigaraki can't actually see the attack and is completely caught off guard. Despite her overpower quirk, I'm starting to understand why Star is America's number one hero. Star then uses the air giant to crush Shigaraki and keep him in place for the next attack. Star then sets a new rule of combining all the lasers into one big laser, which the giant uses almost like a lightning rod, which could be a nod at the Greek god Zeus, which would be perfect with what I said earlier about Star being just like a god. Star's attack here is not to destroy Shigaraki, but to stop him from regenerating for the actual finishing blow. Once Star launches this massive attack, she gets a call from Commander Agpa, who disagrees with Star rushing off to help Japan without permission, but he's willing to aid Star in defeating Shigaraki. Star would then ask if the weapons are ready, which the commander would respond that they are. Commander Agpa then comments on Star's shining personality and tells her that it's finally time to surpass All Might and defeat the villains once and for all, while we get the final shot of Tiamat missiles coming towards the fight indicating that they're going to use some very powerful missiles to defeat Shigaraki, which is where the episode ends. What an incredibly strong start to the season, with getting straight into the action. For those of us who have been watching My Hero Academia for 8 years now, this season is going to be a big one, and marks the final chapter as the beginning of the end. But man, I am so excited to see all the amazing scenes finally adapted from the manga, and as always, if you're going to list spoilers down below in the comments, then please use a a spoiler warning as to not spoil for anime only watchers but otherwise click on this video next if you would like to see more from me internet stranger if not then i hope you have a good day pine tree logging off